Andy Raymond, out of Australia, the ARU. It's Andy Raymond unfiltered for God's sake. Andy, welcome back. I started the show by saying, mate, I did a big editorial, I did a big spiel. I, I tell the truth, Andy, at the start of the program, and this one was about Netflix uh, starting a brand new show along the lines of Drive to Survive, mate, the F1 uh, doco, about the Six Nations this weekend. And Warren Gatlin is really concerned because uh, no one apart from Netflix has editorial control. And he's worried that what goes on in a dressing room, the sanctity of the things that are said, what you say, do to motivate your players, well, that's going to offend the snowflakes. And you and me know this is true. Netflix are going to use every C word, every F word, every insult. But in a dressing room, we know that this goes on and it doesn't mean anything. Well, what, why should we it, be... Of Keep going. Of course it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's It's... It's not personal. It's not nasty. It, it, look, it might not be correct grammar as such, but it happens when boys get together and testosterone flies and there's egos about and you're trying to motivate. Yeah. Um, yes, people are going to be offended. They're going to be greatly offended. And Mum will take little Johnny out of rugby because the coaches are nasty and they expect you to do your best. Well, sadly, that's life. That's life. We've, we've got to do our best. And, and if we do our best, that's great. And if you're not good enough at the end of that, well, you move on to something else. Mm. And that's the way we were brought up. Not, not everyone wins a gold medal. Mate, I heard you speaking about the Olympics when you were 12 years of age. I didn't know they had the Olympics <laughs> or even sport when you were 12 years of age. It was 1976 and New Zealand won the hockey gold uh, over Australia yep. in the final. And it remains just one of our proudest moments. And the, the coach of that uh, team sadly passed around the weekend, Ross Gillespie. But, yeah. you know, these guys never kind of get the kudos that they absolutely deserve. But as I was saying, mate, you know, you watch the footage. They had cricket pads, a cricket box. That was the protection the keeper had. He had a baseball cap, mate. That was it. They were, they, yeah, you know, crazy. You talk about absolutely hard men crazy. and hard women. I mean, how, you know, come on, they're, they're hockey balls like a rock coming at you at 100 mile an hour. Yeah, and that, that's going back to 86, uh, uh, 76. Yeah. And you fast forward five, year, uh, five years uh, to 1981, and that was when we got our revenge, wasn't it? Yes. And it's today. Yes. It's today yes. the anniversary of Underarm Trevor Chapel. What do you remember about it at the time? I look at a couple of things. I mean, Rob Muldoon saying that the you know the colour of the Australian jerseys reflects you know the the the, the actual character of the people. But at the time, I remember yep. it was just so weird and so bizarre because a six only tied the game on those MCG boundaries. The other thing I remember was Lance Cairns just going berserk with his bat. What do you what do you actually remember? I, really strange. I've, I've got a strange memory of it. Trevor bowled the ball, Trevor Chappell. Greg Chappell was the captain on the field. And Ian Chappell was in commentary. And Ian Chappell basically screamed out off, mo off microphone, Greg, no, you can't do this, no. And for whatever reason, as a young impressionable sports fan, that's the thing that, that sticks with me all these years later, that... The three brothers were, were involved in very different ways and saw it very, very differently. Greg Chappell, a few years back, I remember, came out. This is the platform people and Andy Raymond unfiltered with us uh, and said that, you know, he was under so much stress, so much pressure. I just don't believe a yep. single word. Because also, uh, you won't remember in that game, he was actually out caught to a brilliant Martin Sneddon catch. And the umpires, because they didn't have replays in those days, they didn't think Sneddon would make it, so they weren't watching. He actually caught the ball, and so of course we saw it on TV. But they couldn't go back and use a TV replay. But I, I don't, I don't buy that from Greg Chapel. And also, what a toady rat, mate! The big brother tells the younger brother, "Oh, you got to bowl it," and because he's the captain, you got to bloody do it yourself, mate. Hey, do it yourself. I, I say, do it yourself. Um, difficult in that type of theatre because Trevor was very much. Uh, the forgotten of the chapels and, and as as stern and as disciplinarian as Greg was and as Ian was, Trevor Trevor's career would have been over right then if he had have ignored his older brother. Um, years later, Greg came out and, and I, I don't recall the exact numbers, but you said, you know, he was out there for 43 overs. Uh, it was a, a long innings. It was extreme heat. Then he was out there for 50 overs with the bat. He was, he was almost blaming fatigue yeah. and weariness and that his head wasn't in it. Yeah, look, I, I don't buy it. I think there's regrets there. Uh, and it's, it is one of those moments that in 2023, all these years later, 
Mate, we're still talking yeah, about yeah. it, and people are still talking about it, and I would suggest there wouldn't be two days go by in Greg Chappell's life where someone somewhere doesn't ask a question or mention it. It was the best thing that happened to one-day cricket, especially down this part of the world. Let's not make no bones about that. All of a sudden, you need incident, be it by accident, don't you? You do. You, look, you, you need profile and controversy sells. And, and controversy sells was never more evident in my lifetime than Mike Tyson. Yes. If Mike Tyson was anyone else, the world would have hated him. But because he was a heavyweight boxer, we excused him. We forgave him up until a certain degree. But we got excited by him. And the more naughty he was the more we loved it and the more we looked forward to his next fight. So that's where the controversy sells. And it's really interesting. You, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we we're talking about the change of the Wallaby coach and dear Eddie Jones has come out this week with one of the more bizarre press conferences you'll ever see. But you said Eddie's been brought in to partially to lift the profile back into the limelight of rugby. Well, that's exactly what he's done with his press conference. It was weird. It was vintage Eddie Jones, but people today are talking rugby, and go. we haven't been. There you go. And look, you know, and, and I don't know whether you paid it any attention, scant attention, that's perfectly okay, but you had the sevens on in Sydney over the weekend and 27,000 there every uh, both days. I mean, that's bloody good as well. Look, this is what the sport needs going into 2027. He's saying all the right things, mate. He's saying, oh, we're going to take out the All Blacks, mate. We're going to go for the World Cup, mate. And look, Dave Rennie might be a great coach, but... Part and parcel of the gig these days is you've got to you've got to add a little bit more, and I just don't think Rennie's yeah. that that guy. Look, and no disrespect to him, I mean he could, he could be a much better coach, but this is why they. I'm, I'm convinced that this is what they want from Eddie Jones. They want rugby to actually be a relevant sport in Australia, and it hasn't been. That's you're exactly right. They want it to be relevant. They want it to be spoken about, and Eddie Jones is a the coach, but b the driving factor and ambassador for growth um he will create headlines i'm a little concerned i'm a little concerned about boasting bragging and sledging before kickoff because <laughs> history tells the tale in all sports yep. you end up looking like an absolute wanker yep um but eddie oh, eddie i'm not sure of on this one i, I think he, he let loose and then he backtracked um he initially said um you know, the Bledisloe Cup, it's the important marker for our team and for our public to get a gauge of winning the Rugby World Cup. Three and a half minutes later, he said, yeah, it won't be the be-all and end-all because the World Cup's the big tournament. So he's uh, he's thrown the lure out there and got, realised, oh, geez, I've just piled a whole heap of pressure on myself. Uh, how do I get out of this? So a little bit bizarre from Eddie. Andy Raymond Unfiltered is with us. A quick one before we move on to a couple of other subjects, uh, including talking about snakes, the one that's under your house at the moment. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, I oh, know, I oh, know. And this is what we don't get in New Zealand, so you've got to talk to us about this red belly under the bed. All right. Um, uh, the, 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 the coming out of Campbell Johnston, uh, the All Black, not the first ever gay man to play for the All Blacks, we know that, but doing it 18 years later, um, and which, you know, is uh, I suppose it would have much more impact if he could do it at the time, but he couldn't do it at the time, even though he told his teammates, is this a big deal over in Australia? I can't imagine it would be, given the fact that you've had Ian Roberts and, you've, and, 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 and so forth, but you tell me, is it making news? Uh, it is making news, and um, there is a, an air of positivity about it which I love. Um, mate, I'm of the opinion, um, I'm sad that the, the poor fella went through, you know, mental torture for a long time. In, in my happy little naive world, I'd like to think everyone's happy all of the time. Fine. And I, I, hate, Fine. I hate seeing people upset and, and struggling with decisions and struggling with mental demons. And so the fact that uh, Campbell's had to, you know, live two lives that upsets me um him coming out don't care I, I don't care what relationship what race you are if you're you're either a good person or a there bad you go. person there you go. but it, it's a it's a big thing for a, a lot of people and um if it can the big one for me mate is if it can lift the burden for someone else yeah just one person, one person. 
to be a happier person and live a happier life. I reckon that's tremendous in my world. That's what I want to see come out of it. I, uh, you, Andy Raymond, unfiltered on the platform. You copped it like a chook on Twitter, as you always do, because I put an editorial piece saying that I personally just don't care, and I don't care. Look, I marched for homosexual law reform in 1985. I had glass jugs chucked in my head, all kinds of abuse and stuff like that. There's very few of us who actually marched and protested at that time. But look, I just, you know, to me, I just don't care because to me, I just want to live in a world where it, it doesn't matter who you sleep with, providing that they're happy and it's consensual and everything else. But I do understand, and, I, and, I, and I'm like you, if it, if it means one person feels better about themselves as a result of that, I applaud it. The snake under yep. your house. Now, look, you know, I, see this, you know, we have vermin in this country, but what they do is they go around looting when we have floods. That's that's the kind of snakes that we have, okay? Oh, yeah. But you have actually, Terrible. you've got a red belly under the, ha- can't you capture it? I've seen programs in Australia where the snake people come around and get these things. Uh, the snake bloke oh. lives not too far from my house and, and he's on speed dial. And he came around and after 45 minutes said, I think it's moved on. I've checked. So I am living blissfully ignorantly that it has moved on and it's not in the bushes or under the house in the sand. A red belly black snake, just not what I need. Okay, so are these, I mean, as soon as you say red belly black snake, I'm looking this thing up. Is this poisonous? Yeah, absolutely it's poisonous. There's been deaths from these things. What the hell's that noise going on? I have no idea. It's your phone or something. Somebody's emailing or tweeting or, 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 or texting or something. Anyway, look, that one again. The NRL players dispute. Where are we at? And are we going to see any preseason or not? Uh, we are going to see any pre-se- uh, We are going to see preseason. It, it is going to get up and going, mate. Thankfully, um, I'm expecting a resolution. Maybe even later this week. And when I say resolution, I will say a temporary resolution. No one wants to. Um, no one wants to uh, to concede, uh, but no one wants to look like a fool. So they, but they're both going to tread carefully, and I'm expecting a shaking of the hands and a really nice three-paragraph media release from the Rugby League Players Association and the NRL, but then I think they'll sit down and, and nut it out in private. And to be honest, privately is where it needs to be done, not not in public. Same. Again, again you know, these things being played out in public, um, you know, and we go back to the original topic of conversation, you know, uh, and, 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 and I believe the sanctity, or finally, of that dressing room, let's just go back to that topic, being... Yep. And we've had plenty of text messages come back on this, which I'll, I'll read out in a second. Um, is that male, female, it doesn't matter. Look, you know, we I, I had one um, football coach with the kids and uh, and all the parents yep. ganged up on him once because he, you know, he screamed and shouted once because they were behaving like little bastards. They were 11 years old and they're behaving yep. like little... And, and, he, and he had a go at them. And I was there when it happened. And, you know, and you know when a man is going over the top or you know when a man actually yeah. cares, cares and loves and he just needed, they needed to be yelled at. And sometimes us men, Andy, we are stupid. We need to be yelled at, us boys, sometimes because yeah. it's the only way to get it through our thick damn skulls. And, and if Warren yep. Gatlin walks into that dressing room and says, you, you F and C, you're a pussy, you're this, you're that. Hey, well, you know, what Sir Alex Ferguson used to do is apparently even when Wayne Rooney was playing the best game of his life, the first thing he'd do, he'd just tear strips off him in the dressing room. Rooney would get so goddamn irate, he'd go out there and play even better. It was called motivation. That's what a coach does. He knows to pick and choose. You get a cuddle, you get a kick up the backside. You know, yep. I, I just don't, I really just don't think that this generation of, of snowflakes can cope with the harsh reality of what goes on in there. In that case, they don't deserve to know. And that's where the good coaches know the difference. Some people do need a cuddle. Some people do need to kick up the arse. And it's finding out and being able to manage who is who and how to do it properly and how to do it completely. Um, look, in sport with television and the massive dollars on offer, uh, there is no sanctity of a dressing room anymore, and that's any sport. Uh, us, the consumers... We want the best possible product, and if that's players or coaches mic'd up or cameras in the dressing rooms, that's that's what we're getting. But you, you can't have it both ways. You can't want a better television and entertainment product, but then complain because you got upset by the product. I mean, it, again, it's a, a different generation, mate. Want everything now, but don't want to concede anything. Hey, are you Andy Raymond Unfiltered? What we got this week, pal? 
Ryan James delivers his dream team tonight. Junior Bolo, the Parramatta Eel, jumps onto the podcast. And former Warrior and New Eel Jack Murchie this weekend is dropping in for a weekend session. So uh, a big week on the podcast, mate. Wonderful. As always, I'm always going to ask you this particular question at the end of every chat this season. Warriors for the top eight, yes or no? Yes. Oh, you sod. I know what you're doing there. I know what you're doing there, you sod. You sod. Andy Raymond unfiltered. That's his podcast. Jump on, people. Uh, if you love what you know, you hear when you just get a snippet of him on Wednesdays, he's absolutely brilliant when it comes to the podcast.